Now, I have a question for thee. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? I love it when games are able to weave some of their mechanics into the lore. Dark Souls does it with you being undead and being the reason why you are able to continue playing after you die, and Baldur's Gate 3 has a similar function in form of the character Withers. Withers is a mysterious and interesting figure, and in this video I want to try to find out more about the backstory of this mysterious creature. A quick heads up, there will be spoilers in this video about some Dungeons & Dragons lore, however also be aware that canon in Dungeons & Dragons is a bit of a complicated topic, since many adventures can have a variety of different endings, and are written by different people over a very long period of time. So some ambiguity is unavoidable, and some might even be intentional. However, I will try to be as general as possible and not make too many assumptions. But first, let's take a look at who Withers is in the game. The creature calling himself Withers is an undead, not really a skeleton, looking more like a mummy. You can find him quite early in the game in a crypt, shortly after you finish the tutorial. While you don't need to find him, it is actually suggested you do, since he turns out to be quite helpful gameplay-wise. Withers allows you to recruit additional companions, lets you respec and change your character's classes, and also revive your companions should they die during your adventures. But who is he that he has those kind of powers? Bringing back the dead not just as zombies, but as actual people is no easy feat as we experience during the story itself. The only instance we know of that this actually happened is when Merkel resurrected Isabel, the daughter of Catherick Thorne. This suggests that true resurrection is actually a divine act, especially if it is done easily. Remember, for characters true resurrection is basically a ninth level spell and technically even that one has its limitations. So is Withers a god? Let's take a closer look at that. Just a quick reminder, if you like this video so far, please click the like button and you might also want to take a look at the other videos I make. Just take a look at my channel and maybe you even want to subscribe? Maybe? If you paid attention, there has actually been a god of death introduced in Baldur's Gate 3. Merkel, the patron deity of Catholic form, is often addressed by that moniker. But as a matter of fact, at the time of the game, Merkel is not actually the god of death. You see, Baldur's Gate 3 plays after an event called the Second Sundering. The Second Sundering happened after a quite confusing period of time in the world and ended up rearranging the pantheon of Faroon and reassigning some of the portfolios of different gods. While Merkel actually was the god of death before, he did lose his portfolio, probably due to the involvement of him and his two buddies Baal and Bane in a few occurrences that did not necessarily please the overgod Eo. In his place, the hero Kalimvor Lion's Bane was promoted to the Lord of the Dead, while Merkel just as Bane and Baal has been reduced to a quasi-divine being, still insanely powerful but not really a god. In the world of Dungeons & Dragons, Kelimvor is a significant deity who is closely linked with themes of death, destiny and the afterlife. He is typically described as having a strong adherence to a balanced and neutral moral code. Kelimvor is often depicted wearing a black armor and wielding a large two-handed sword. He governs over a realm called the Fook Plain and the City of Judgment. Here the souls of the deceased undergo a fair and impartial trial before they are directed to their appropriate afterlife destinations. Kelimvor's journey to becoming a deity is an intriguing story within the lore of the Forgotten Realms. His devout followers, including clerics and paladins, are dedicated to uphold principles of justice and fairness, even in the realm of death. Kalimvor is perpetually engaged in a struggle against undead creatures and deities who represent chaos. This struggle illustrates his unwavering commitment to maintaining a balance and order in the realms associated with death and destiny. Now, could Withers be Kalimvor, the actual god of death? While this is a possibility, he doesn't quite seem to fit the personality that is described for Kalimvor. Withers seems more neutral, not someone who would actively pass judgment, but more like a passive observer. However, there is still another deity in Dungeons & Dragons lore that would fit even better with the soft-spoken mummy. There thou art. The dead three. Thy faces, gods. Thy actions, barely worthy of the name. 
Didst truly believe thy ploy would succeed? Didst believe I would not notice? Didst think the other gods would not notice? I overestimated thee. They did not. Long time ago, the dead three, Baal, Bane and Merkel, were actually mortals who had ambitions to dethrone a god and become divine beings themselves. They journeyed through desolate lands in search of Jagal, the god associated with death, tyranny and murder, and a place known as the Castle of Bones. Upon arrival, the Dark Three quickly laid claim to the throne, engaging in a brief squabble. However, the god of the dead soon turned his attention to the companions. To their astonishment, Jergal willingly stepped aside, expressing his willingness to bestow his powers upon the three. Bane was the one to assume the divine responsibilities of hatred, strife and tyranny. Merkel, who came in second, took control over the realm of the deceased, while Baal was left with the dominion over death and murder. Jergal himself relinquished his prominent position, transitioning into the role of a seneschal of Merkel. This role continued even after Merkel's demise, and it endured through the reigns of Siric and subsequently Kelimvor, who took Jergal's place as the deity in charge. In the vast world of Dungeons and Dragons, Jergal is an ancient deity of great importance, intimately connected with the concepts of death, fate and the meticulous management of the afterlife. Jergal's own history is intertwined with the rich tapestry of the Forgotten Realms, stretching back to an era before the rise of even ancient empires. As countless ages passed, Jergal underwent a significant transformation. His divine role expanded beyond just presiding over death itself. He took on the monumental responsibility of meticulously recording the passings of every being across the multiverse. This unique duty granted him a central role in the cosmology of Dungeons and Dragons, where he became the eternal guardian of the departed. While Jagal's prominence has waned over time, as he willingly shared his power with other death-related deities, he continues to be an enduring figure within the Pantheon. He diligently oversees the journey of souls to the afterlife and maintains the delicate balance of the cosmos. This description fits better with what we have seen of Widows so far. Jagal is described to often appear in a mummy-like form, being primarily concerned with documenting the happenings of the world. We also know that Widows often references documentation in his dialogue which is another hint to him actually being Dragal, or an avatar of Dragal. Also, we find a lot of hints about his identity in the crypt where we encounter the undead companion. Right in front of his chamber, we find undead scribes. And in a side chamber, we are able to discover ancient books. If all of that did not convince you that this is actually Dragal, we can always look at the names of the models and artwork for the game, where Larian Studios actually called this figure Dragal. However, that would be far less fun than trying to deduce this by ourselves, wouldn't it? That's basically it for today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with any future videos I make. I try to make a variety of videos on lots of different topics and I hope to see you guys in one of them soon. Have a good day and bye bye. Dead. I am not a skeleton. I am neither dead or undead, neither alive or unliving. I don't get it. Thou wilt. Can I touch your face? No. No. So, what were you before you were this? There is no before. So you've always been a bone man? In a sense.